Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 34. Machining a three-tap steam turret, which is a bit different to the ones that I usually make. The construction of this turret is very simple, but it will look good when finished and fitted. I'm not building this turret to any kind of particular design or plan. The design is inspired by the size of the piece of brass that I'm going to use to make it. No prizes here for which piece of brass I'm going to use. Here it is on the bench, looking very dirty and grubby. It's been in my scrap box for a few years. I don't know where it came from in the first place. This is definitely the size that I need to make the three-tap steam turret. The job begins by cleaning this piece of brass bar on the belt sander, just to clean off all the dirt. Now it's time to mark out the brass for the positions of the taps. The first thing to do is to find the centre point. The piece of brass is one and three quarters of an inch long, so half of that is seven eighths of an inch. Or if you want to be simplistic, half an inch plus three eighths is half of one and three quarters. I often work out measurements using this strange method. That's because mathematically I'm depriving the village of its idiot. Initially, this is how I marked out the positions for the quarter by 40 steam taps. And these measurements allow the steam taps to tighten up right next to each other. The first part of the machining job starts with facing the ends. The marks left by the saw that initially cut this piece of bar is not what I want to see. In this clip, using my felt-tipped deep hole marker, I'm drawing two lines, one at each end of the piece of bar. The reason for this is because I need to turn the end of this piece of metal to make it look a little more decorative than just a block of brass. For this job, I'm going to use the four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted to my Smart and Brown lathe. I don't use this lathe as much as I should do, really. It's an excellent machine, but I try and use smaller machines which are more relevant to people with small home workshops. After facing the front of the brass block, what I'm doing here is just turning a register on each end. And it has to be just the right diameter, making sure I get rid of any flats on the part that I'm turning. What diameter is this end going to be? I have no idea. When it looks right, it is right. The diameter of this part is of no consequence. At this diameter, I think it looks about right for the job. The next part of the job involved removing the part from the chuck, turning it round and refitting it, and now in one pass I'm turning this part down to exactly the same as the other end. To be honest, this part is slightly longer than I need it to be, because I wanted to allow for deburring the holes after threading, which is much later on in the process. Here's a story so far. It is a piece of brass bar with the ends machined, and now the positions for the taps do not look right. I need to make the positions for the two outer taps midway between the centre tap and the end of the bar. What you can't see at the moment is what is in my mind's eye for the design of this steam turret. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. You'll see it in the next episode. Besides, I'm just making it up as I go along, really. In this clip, I've accurately scribed some lines on the felt-tip pen marks. These are exactly in the right position. So it's back over to the Smart and Brown lathe, put the part back in the chuck, and this time I'm using a centre drill to drill the ends. But I'm not going in very far. It is just a guide for a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill. I don't want the hole down the middle of this part to be too big. Here is a word of caution, because it's top tip time. Do not drill the hole all the way through. This is a 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter drill bit and it is likely to wander and exit the other side off center. I'm drilling this small hole halfway into the block, after which I turn the part around in the chuck and do exactly the same from the other end. First of all with the center drill to make sure the hole is definitely in the middle of the bar. Then I refit the 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill and drill all the way through this time, or at least halfway where the twist drill meets the other part of the hole. Over now to the drilling machine to carefully drill the holes in the bar for the valves. 
I took my time with this to make sure that the centre drill was precisely on the scribed lines. I centre drilled all three of the holes. Then I fitted a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill, which is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. I drilled the centre hole all the way through till it came out the other side. Before removing the part from the cross vise on the drilling machine, I threaded the holes quarter by 40 threads per inch with a tap held in the drill chuck. This, by the way, is a taper tap, and once the holes were threaded in the piece of brass bar, I fitted a plug tap, also known as a bottoming tap, and went all the way to the bottom of the holes. By doing it this way, the threads will all be accurate and not tapered, which makes it much easier to screw in the fittings. Here you can see a big problem. The holes in the block are too close together to allow all three of these taps to be fitted into the holes therein. Don't worry about it, it is all part of the master plan. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.